let the whole total we go we get out of this <laughs> Let's go through this and also bring Tim up to speed. Uh, until you boy, we're in, the, we're in the key of E flat. Your thing is tuned to B flat, so there'll be some common tones here that you could you could borrow. Just uh, just play your your lean back. Hi, my name is Sitar Namwalie and I'm the book writer for Escape the Musical. Hi, my name is Eric Wainaina. I am the founding artistic director of the Nairobi Musical Theatre Initiative. My name is Kendin Konge. Uh, my name is Gatia. I am a writer, an actor and a storyteller. Two. The musical is about a young man, depends where you want to begin, but let me begin with the young man called Jemo, who's been in prison. Um, he's been in prison many times. Um, he comes from Dandora, and uh, he's the kind of young man who uh, comes from a place <laughs> where... There are very, very few opportunities and getting into a life of crime is almost inevitable for most, most young men. And he does fall into a life of crime, um, and, and which, which means that he goes to, to prison several times. And this time he's just fed up. For whatever reason, he's, he just doesn't, he doesn't want to be there. Um, he's also been in the acro, uh, uh, an acrobat, uh, because um, a while back in Kenya, all of a sudden, uh, NGOs were training young people, men and women, young, young men and young women, um, to be acrobats. And, you know, if you're in Nairobi, you will see them um, at traffic lights, you know, doing their acrobatic uh, acts, which you then, then they ask for money. Um, and so he's one of those young men. And he um, is fed up with being in prison, and he and, you know, four others uh, decide to escape. But he's the only one who survives because he manages to knock on a door and get a young woman to hide him. And she hides him. And she ends up being the second wife, second young wife of the head of the prison. Um, and, so the, and so he's hiding under the, their bed in this, one room, um, in, in this one room that is split by a curtain. And the head of the prison, the superintendent of the prison, who is her husband, is looking for him. So the, the musical happens over three days and two nights in this one space, with the tension growing and growing and growing. And there is also a device that um, uh, um, we've, I've used, we've used in the musical, in that there is a chorus of five. Um, and the chorus messes with them and, and, and plays all sorts of roles and functions within the musical. Escape the Musical is a hip-hop musical. And I'm not a hip-hop artist at all. I'm not a hip-hop composer at all. Um, but I, I bring a couple of things into writing for musical theatre. Um, and, and when Sitawa, who's the book writer, and Elness called me in, I thought, okay, if I, if I brought in a couple of friends who A, no hip hop and um, um, would be able, would sort of be able to guide each other through the process. And so I think what I'm bringing into the thing is sort of a, a harmonic sense, a melodic sense, um, and also sort of a dramaturgical sense, musically as well as um, sort of where the story is going. Is that the person? Ah, no. 
But at the end of the day, we work really well as a, as, as, as a collaborative team, you know, and, and it's always the best idea in the room wins as far as possible. We've been really good uh, with each other in that sense. In this residency for this musical, Escape the Musical, um, I'd say I've been a contributor because um, there's a lot of arrangements um, and songwriting that I've done in the process, yeah. So I think I'd, I'd call myself a contributor. Singer, contributor. Are, are. The structure of the week has every day is kind of different in terms of content, but wake up, breakfast, and then we go right into the work, which is reviewing some of the work we did the previous day, and then workshopping and structuring some of um, the scene we're working on on that day, and developing it into music with lots of breaks, which is as it should be, and volleyball somewhere in the end. What a sound! What happened? What happened? I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I'm going to double. Um, and I think this this workshop is very important for the Kenya the Kenyan art scene, especially as the residency itself, um, since it's such a meld of talents um, who usually work around each other but not always together. And especially for this musical, which I know has been in development for like five years, to finally have it get to this stage where it's almost complete and almost staged. Really, I can't even imagine the impact it's going to have and the ripples that's going to have. Even just from the residency, the number of people who are going to work together after this independently. You know, this, the, the residency, this particular residency, it has been um, so, um, it's, such a, it's, it's been such a valuable and um, precious, um, beautiful experience because it's a very collaborative process. So I have a role to play. I have the vision for this musical. I know. I know what, what I want it to look like. And then I create the space for all the other people to contribute. And it's, a, it's an uh, intergenerational um, uh, uh, creation process. There are people from different, you know, there is a young, young one, or, you know, I think she's 18 or something, right? And I'm not gonna say my age, you know. <laughs> one of the challenges that we're facing with musical theatre is the notion that it is an elitist art form. This musical is in Sheng. This has to be one of the most grassroots things that, has, that, that, that I've ever worked on, you know? Um, and I think that it will, it will bring this kind of storytelling to an audience that doesn't even know that they need and love this thing, you know? It'll open doors for us in a way that remains unimagined. I think what it will also do for Kenyans is that it will serve as a reminder that justice is not a reserve for a few. Um, it's something that we really, really need to make sure makes sense and works in this country because I feel that, that that's one of the things that ails our country. Our justice system is, it is so skewed and it is really messed up. And I'm so amazed that Tika is, is 20 years old because I saw you guys at the right at the beginning. Um, and, and I'm so glad that you're able to, to uh, celebrate your 20th year and that I'm part of this uh, celebration. Um, and I wish you another 50 years, actually. Thank you, Tika. You have come in at a time that um, we really, 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 really needed your, your help and support and in partnership and vision. Um, it's. Uh, Finding, finding, finding partners is always a really, really hard thing to do. Happy 20th anniversary, Tika. Yeah. Are we done? No. No? <laughs> Kidding. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. Go! Get one! <laughs>